Hey Nancy Drew fans, we're back for book 22, The Clue in the Crumbling Wall. Originally published in 1945, this time I have a 1960s reprint with the original text and illustrations. We start with Nancy discovering that four rose bushes have been stolen from her garden, and a young policewoman arrives to take her report. It turns out that Lieutenant Masters has been a fan of Nancy's work, and she has a new mystery for her to solve. A missing persons case, a dancer named Floriana Johnson, mysteriously disappeared ten years ago. She needs to be found within three weeks in order to claim a castle left to her by her now-deceased fiancé. Nancy meets Floriana's sister and young niece and is totally charmed, but is strangely shy about taking the job. Surely there must be some clue to her whereabouts, Nancy said thoughtfully. A clever person should be able to find your sister. If only someone would make an honest effort, Mrs. Fenimore's voice became pleading. Won't you help me, Miss Drew? I'm afraid it's too big a job for me. Oh, no, it isn't, Mrs. Fenimore insisted. I've read about your work. You're the very one to find my sister. I hardly know what to say, Nancy demurred. From there, it's pretty much the usual random moments of action repeated trespassing while looking for clues, being trapped a bunch of places, and some really thuggish bad guys. But the story is just not up to the usual standards. I had a lot of trouble getting into it, and a description from Girl Sleuth gives a possible explanation. At the time this story was written, the ghostwriter Mildred is working a full-time job as a journalist at a Toledo newspaper. She's taking care of a young child, and she's also nursing a husband who has had several strokes. I was a tired writer, she remembered. Lots of people think that Nancy Drew just came, but I've paid for that with blood, with real blood. I sweat when I wrote the books, and I worked hard, unbelievably hard. I don't think very many people would ever work as hard as I worked during the most active years of my life. I would never do it again. But there is still some fun to be had here, and a few real saving graces. This story is set in River Heights in the surrounding area, and it is certainly the most diverse and interesting set of characters that we've seen so far. My favorite is an old sailor named Mehardy, who travels around walking the streets and selling clams. He has a special song that he sings, and he also mostly speaks in rhyme. Spying Nancy and the housekeeper, he began to carol. Clams by the bushel, clams by the lot, clams for the kettle, clams for the pot. None for us today, Mrs. Green called, starting toward the house. Old Mehardy smiled his most winning smile. Real cheap today, he coaxed. You can't turn down my clams, Mehardy's. Why, my clams are nutritious, my clams are delicious, my clams are delectable, my clams are respectable. We also learn that Nancy's taking flying lessons and that she'll soon be good enough to fly solo. She says that every girl should learn to fly, a sentiment that is obviously shared by author Mildred, who is still flying at the age of 82. No mention of food, outfits, or making fun of best moments, and only one of Ned. He's in South America, and perhaps distance has made Nancy's heart grow a little fonder. Hurrying to a window seat, Nancy eagerly opened the envelope. She admired Ned Nickerson and had missed him since he'd gone to South America. I can't say I'm having a good time, Ned wrote, but I'm doing some interesting work. I miss you and all the fun we had together. Remember those mysteries we used to solve? You did most of the work, and I went along for company. I'm willing to bet that you're head over heels in a mystery this very minute, right? Right you are, Ned, Nancy laughed happily as she tucked the missive away for another reading later on. How I wish Ned were here to help me. Next up, the mystery of the tolling bell. <laughs> 